gallu hyfryd i gael eich cwmni heddiw. It's really good to, to have everyone with us today. Um, uh, it, it, it will probably be over the next uh, minute or two uh, that we will be joined by a number of other people, uh, but a very warm welcome to you all. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to share some information with you. Uh, the uh, subject of this session is Powys Partnerships and how to get involved. And so I'd like to share some information with you um, probably for the next 15 minutes or so um, in terms of what that landscape looks like. After that session, I'm going to um, open the session for, um, particularly at that stage, for questions of clarification or anything that hasn't made sense to you or any additional information that you might want to ask for or, or explore. And then we're actually going to go into uh, smaller groups uh, to have some discussion about how we might improve things in terms of getting involved with strategic partnerships and so on. Uh, so um, if I, um, uh, first of all, um, try to explain a little about what, how, what the landscape looks like in terms of partnerships. I think this first slide is meant to demonstrate that the landscape is complex. As you look at the slide, and it may be that you can or can't read those individual boxes, that doesn't matter too much. But what um, this slide is seeking to, um, to, to illustrate is that there are, there's, there's an industry of partnerships out there. And so often people say to me and to Pavo, well, you know, these partnerships, we know that there are partnerships out there, but we don't know much about them. Uh, and uh, how can we get involved and how can we receive information about them and so on? And the reality is that currently, Pavo attends well over 60, we, we, we did a mapping exercise and we counted to 68 and then we stopped counting. Um, it, it really is a, um, a, a rather complex and a very, very large partnership environment out there when it comes to national um, uh, uh, opportunities to involve the sector in partnerships, but also that regional level and indeed the local level. And what you'll see there on that slide as well, if you look just to the top left hand corner of the, 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 uh, the yellow box, you'll see there that, that this is just one example where it says North Powys times five, because so often partnerships have substructures underneath them. So uh, North Powys is the, um, uh, the, the initiative within Powys that is looking to develop a new model of health and care based on um, uh, an integrated health and care centre with satellite community hubs. But it's, but it's about the model of care as well. Well, quite literally, there are there are lots of different groups. There's a board, there's an officers group, there's all kinds of different groups just associated with that one uh, um, particular initiative. So, it's, so the first thing I'm trying to uh, illustrate uh, um, is that this is not simple. And I always feel almost a pang of guilt really when people um, say to me, well, you know, we, we, we don't understand how this partnership landscape works. And it's very difficult then to make the complex simple. I don't mean the fact that, you know, people uh, haven't got the ability to understand, please don't misunderstand me. It's just that how do you, um, how do you put in a few words or even how do you put on one page what actually is a very, very large, complicated, complex arena. That is a challenge. I don't think Pavo has 
come up with a, 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 a good solution to that. And I think part of certainly what I'd be interested in in this session is um, what thoughts, what ideas, what um, contributions, suggestions, recommendations might you have as to how we might improve uh, what we do and how we do it. So it's complex. But let's try to navigate at least a way in there. I think the first thing I would probably suggest is that there are two senior strategic partnerships in Powys. And those partnerships are the RPB, which is the Regional Partnership Board, and the PSB, which is the Public Services Board. Both of these partnerships are there as a statutory requirement. The Regional Partnership Board has to be in existence because it's a requirement of the Social Services and Wellbeing Act. The Public Services Board is a requirement because it has to be there um, uh, because of, of the requirements in the um, Wellbeing of Future Generations Act. And so though both of those flagship pieces of primary legislation by Welsh Government say we want these partnerships to be in place. Now, the RPB is a regional partnership. And if we were in North Wales, that would include a number of different organisations, six local authorities, one health board, six uh, um, county voluntary councils and so on. We're quite fortunate or relatively very fortunate in Powys because Powys is regarded as a region and a locality. And so in our region and locality, we have one health board, we have one local authority and we have one third sector to bring together in partnership. Now, that's not easy, but it is a lot easier than some other regions and and. Uh, uh, and areas in Wales. So what do these partnerships do? Well, again, it's a requirement of the legislation that the RPB puts in place what's known as an area plan. And our area plan in Powys is called the Health and Care Strategy. And that plan sets out how Powys will support people's well-being and support people's health and care, but crucially, that wider well-being as well. The PSB, the Public Services Board, is responsible for putting in place the Powys Wellbeing Plan. Now, you can see why people who, you know, uh, you know aren't as close to this as, as perhaps uh, people like I am, um, you know, well, we've got the area plan, we've got the well-being plan and, you know, uh, the area plan is about well-being, but we have this other thing called the well-being plan. And it all it all starts to get a little bit fuzzy, really. But those are two separate plans. And they operate in parallel and they're put in place by different um, uh, sibling partnerships, if you like. And both of those partnerships are again required to base their plans on a population assessment. So um, an assessment that takes into consideration population data, but it also takes into consideration what people want and what matters to people. So it's not just about counting the data or counting the statistics. Crucially, and especially within the RPB and the Social Services and Wellbeing Act, very, very strongly within that legislation is the so-called what matters principle. That we need and we should be in the business of delivering what matters to people, not just what the statistics tell us or not just what the data tells us. Um, and if I can give you a very little illustration, um, I, I was quite uh, taken a, a couple of years ago when uh, um, I came across a lady who um, 
who'd had an, a, I think, a hip operation or a, a knee operation. And um, to cut a very long story short, this lady had grandchildren. And she said in this in this conversation, she said, well, actually, if somebody had told me that I wouldn't be able to bend and pick up my grandchildren because of the operation, I'd have lived with the pain. And, and the, the, the reason I'm, I'm telling the story is that the whole purpose of this direction is to have the what matters conversation, you know, not just how can we fix your knee or how can we take away your pain, but actually what matters to you in your life? If bending, albeit with pain, to pick up your grandchildren is more important to you than fixing the pain, then actually that's what we should be in the business of doing. And there are lots of different kinds of, um, uh, of, of, of stories of that type. The good thing about Powys, I think, is that when it comes to the assessment, we've brought the, both of those processes together. So we haven't had a separate assessment for the area plan and a separate assessment for the well-being plan. We have brought those together. Um, is it perfect? No. Is the process faultless? No. And certainly I and many others can look at it and say, well, it would have been better had we been able to do this and that. Um, but nonetheless, there is a, a population well-being assessment um, and it's on the basis of that that plans are developed and reviewed and revised. So those are the two main principal senior partnerships in Powys. Can I just take you through very quickly uh, these partnerships? Again, just to give you a flavor of who's, who's on them and what they do and who's involved. So you'll see there a, um, a list of RPB membership. Now, the important thing here is not just who's on the list, but actually, how do you get to be on that list? And with these partnerships, because they're statutory partnerships, the membership is prescribed by legislation. And so, for example, the, mem the membership has to include um, the director of social services. It has to include the portfolio holder for adult care and children's care within the council. It has to include a national third sector person and it has to include a local third sector umbrella body, usually the county voluntary council. That is actually set out in part nine of the legislation. So in a sense, there's not a lot of flexibility around that. But from a third sector perspective, on the RPB, I, am, I sit on the RPB and, uh, um, and, and again, there's a, there's a substructure under here. Um, and also you'll see there that um, a woman named Julie Gillibanks uh, from, the, uh, from Action for Children, she uh, is there as a, um, a voice for national um, third sector organizations within the RPB. And very importantly, I think, from a children's um, uh, organization, because one of the criticisms of RPBs has been that they have been too adult focused and haven't actually taken into consideration adequately um, uh, children and young people. So that's the membership. The health and well, the health and well-being plan, the area plan then, uh, sorry, no, just for, no, that's not, this, this shows you a bit about the structure of the RPB. Again, it's, it's involved. So under the RPB, there are four sub partnerships and they take a life journey. So we've got the start well partnership. We've got now a general live well partnership. We have a mental health partnership and we have an age well partnership. And so, you know, you can, um, uh, you can join the dots yourself. The start well is about children and young people. Live well is about adults in general. Mental health is about mental health and age well is about older people. And so each of those sub partnerships has its own membership and its own um, uh, forums and, and so on that it connects with 
uh, and and I haven't got time to go into the minutiae of that. But those um, those purple um, lines, arrows that you'll see there are what have been identified as cross cutting issues, safeguarding unpaid carers, workforce, um, Welsh language, advocacy, information advice and assistance, digital and, te digital and technology, um, and uh, new models of delivery, and so on. Um, now, those cross-cutting issues, because they don't, you know, you can't compartmentalise those as issues that are only to do with older people or younger people, uh, then they, be, they are dealt with in what what is known as CROG. It's a wonderful acronym. Um, it's the CCROG, and it stands for the Cross Cutting and Resources Operational Group. You see, you're glad you came to this session, aren't you? Eh? <laughs> you know, isn't all of this just just wonderful? And the CROG group uh, meets again under the RPB to consider these cross-cutting issues, very, very important uh, cross-cutting issues. And then there are various engagement forums to which, uh, uh, to, to which they connect. And just to finish off the RPB, the RPB's health and care strategy then um, is set out in this uh, infographic. Again, I'm afraid um, all this information is available, um, but you can see that uh, uh, under those um, start well, live well, age well uh, partnerships, um, there are there are there are um, there's information there about how the area plan will be implemented and what its priorities are. So you'll see there a focus on well-being, a focus on prevention. The big four, um, uh, the big four are the big four public health issues. And I can see that Claire Swales is on this call, and I know that I'm going to forget one or two of them, but I know that cancer is one, respiratory um, issues are another. And can you help me with the other two, Claire? You're testing me as well now, Carl. Mental health. <laughs> yeah. Cancer, cardio, respiratory. Yeah, cardio. And... Car cardio. Um, okay. Um, yeah. Th th thank, thank you, colleagues. Yeah, that was really, really helpful. Um, <laughs> and then joined up care to make sure that things are as integrated as they need to be and can be. You'll see that the priorities under that are um, principles um, of, of how things will be delivered. And again, I won't go through them all, but it's about do what matters, um, uh, uh, do uh, what's important, um, uh, you know, join things up and, and, and so on. And then uh, the, the future of health and care, you've got, the, if you like, the the platforms on which those priorities will be delivered. So developing the workforce, creating innovative environments like the North Powys um, environment that's being developed, digital first, um, uh, making sure that people are digitally included and digitally competent and digitally supported, and then transformation in partnership, acknowledging that no one agency, no one sector can do it alone. Uh, and making sure that things are as collaborative uh, as, as they need to be. Um, so let me move on quickly to the PSB, the Public Services Board. This is the other board that has, uh, if you like, a wider remit than health and care. In fact, its remit is as wide as you'd like to imagine it. It's about people in Powys, um, and it could be about transport or it could be about um, uh, climate change, it, it could be um, about health and care, um, it could be about um, community safety, it could be about anything that this partnership uh, wants to deal with. Uh, this partnership links very closely with the Future Generations Commissioner, uh, which is a, um, an appointed office by Welsh Government, and unlike the RPB, membership of the PSB is per organization rather than per individual and so um and there are, if you like there are two categories of members within the psb 
the, the first category is statutory members. So those organizations that on, on which a statutory duty has been placed to participate in the RPB. And you'll see there, Council, Health Board, Fire and Rescue, Natural Resources Wales. Those organizations need to participate in the, in the PSB. Within the legislation, there are also other organizations um, that, are, that are called statutory invitees. In other words, the statutory members are required to invite these others to participate should they so wish and sh should they so choose. So here, here again, you have the police, Nash, um, uh, Brecon Beacons, ourselves, Police and Crime Commissioner, Welsh Government, One Voice Wales, Probation Service. And the PSB does have powers to involve others um, at its discretion. So an organisational membership rather than an individual membership. Within the wellbeing plan, there are 12 steps. And again, I, I'm not going to go into this in great detail, but there are a few of these steps that the PSB has chosen to focus on, if you like, as the PSB's business. A lot of the steps will be taken forward as the core business of partner organisations. And there are two particularly that I think you may have a, a particular interest in. And one is step five, which is around community resilience and community resourcefulness. And um, the other is step seven, and I think this is particularly topical nowadays, which is about developing a carbon positive powis. And how do we become more uh, green, if you like, as a county, as public services, as um, uh, public service organizations, as communities. And then uh, steps, um, uh, uh, let me find the right steps. Um, the um, developer holistic approaches, uh, sorry, I've lost this for a moment, but there, there are steps here that are to do with the well, well, with well-being and with health. And those are the steps that are being taken forward by the RPB, if you like, um, as, as, a, as a proxy, I suppose, for the PSB. And so, so that's, the, um, that's the steps 11 and 12. Thank you, Claire. Um, sometimes trying to talk and read at the same time. Uh, I've, I've never been a multitasker. Uh, so uh, um, I, I appreciate that. Um, steps 11 and 12. So that's the well-being plan. Uh, that the um, PSB has put into place and is taking forward. Um, so let me come on now to, um, so the, the, the kind of, well, okay, that's a bit of information about two of the senior partnerships, but you can, you can begin to imagine that I've even only, I've only even scratched the surface about those partnerships. And if there are over 68 of them, then negotiating this terrain becomes rather difficult. But how do we try to do it? How do we currently, in our job as a county voluntary council, how do we currently try to make sure that you, the third sector, and all of our um, stakeholders and partners are as informed and as involved and as influential as we would like you to be? Well, the first thing that we have in place are a number of networks and forums. And again, on this slide, this just gives you um, uh, the, the principal networks that Pavo currently operates. And I won't go through them all, but you can uh, hopefully you, you, you can see them for yourselves. But, you know, just a, uh, by illustration that the um, the yellow boxes are the if you like, powis based networks. So whether that's about transport or about befriending, advocacy, volunteers, um, uh, the agricultural community and so on. The blue boxes are the national partnerships um, that Pavo participates in on behalf of 
the local third sector. And so um, the, uh, um, uh, I, can, I can see that one is missing there. So, um, which is odd because I thought I'd put it on. Uh, I was, I'm looking for the uh, third sector partnership council that I sit on. Um, and that's the main council of Welsh government and its main engagement council for the uh, for the third sector but equally um, uh, we've begun to bring together um, a national partnership around social prescribing um, third sector support wales is a partnership of infrastructure bodies across wales um, and you'll see those those others there and so we operate a number of networks and forums and what we try to do is that we try to um, encourage involvement in these networks and forums from as many organizations, from as many people as they can, because we rely on these networks and forums to inform the voice that we are privileged to articulate in these statutory partnerships. And without them, you know, um, arguably our voice would be less legitimate. And I'm pleased to say that uh, that the forums, lots of the forums are very vibrant and all of them are very active. Uh, and so an encouragement from me today is that if you have an interest in getting involved in any of these forums, then please do let us know because your contribution and your participation would not just be welcome, it would actually be greatly valued. Uh, and so, so that's one way in which we seek to engage with the voluntary sector so that we can take information and we can learn from the voluntary sector and we can make sure that our role on these partnerships is informed by you and that the voice that we articulate is a legitimate voice. Perhaps I could just put in parentheses there, in PAVO, we never ever talk about representing the sector because there are over 4,000 third sector organizations in Paris. And I can guarantee that whatever I say in a partnership or whatever a colleague says, there will always be organizations that will say, not in my name, thank you very much. And so the principle of representation is always really tricky. So what we aim for is that the voice that we articulate is, is legitimate. And the way in which we legitimize it is to try to make sure that we are a listening organization and a learning organization and not just a talking organization. And the forums are really important in that. And then we have our various information channels. And uh, um, many of these are online. So we have our regular e-bulletins. We have the general e-bulletin. We have a, a, a dedicated health and well-being bulletin, a dedicated children and families bulletin. We have, clearly, we have our website. We have a dedicated mental health website and a dedicated mental health blog. And then we have our uh, various social media accounts and social media platforms and you can see them uh, or at least most of them illustrated here be they on facebook or be they on twitter uh, and i think we have one or two instagram accounts as well um, but i suppose the reason for this slide is to say that if information is power we try to empower the sector by tr by seeking to make sure that you have the right information in the right way at the right time. Again, there's room for improvement. We're, we're, we, you know, we're, we're, I, I'm not suggesting for a moment that what we do is in any way flawless, but we certainly put um, we, we put a lot of effort into this, and we we want to be on that journey of continual improvement. And so when people say, well, what's going on in the RPB? What's going on in the PSB? What's going on in the, um, uh, uh, in the Area Partnership Board? Or um, what's going on in the Growing Mid-Wales Partnership? Then when there is information to share, 
we use these mechanisms to share that information and to disseminate the information. And my last slide, you'll be pleased to hear, uh, is just a word about partnership membership, because occasionally people will uh, ask me and ask colleagues, well, how do I get around the table? You know, how do I get around that, 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 that forum? That, well, of course, the networks and forums um, are open to anybody in the sector. And as I say, more the merrier, because the more involvement, the more influence we have. I won't, labor, uh, I won't repeat the point I, I uh, made earlier, but some partnership memberships are prescribed. So they're set down in legislation or in regulation. And actually, we have, um, you know, we, 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 they're not within our gift uh, to change or to alter. Of course, the third sector is so large, as I said, 4,000 odd um, organizations just in Paris. There is no way that everybody can be around every table. And so we need some kind of mechanism, some kind of um, method where the voice of the sector or the voice of a particular constituency within the sector that might be learning disabilities or it may be environment or it could be culture, some mechanism whereby that voice is harnessed, understood and articulated to best effect. And that's when we use our role to broker in those specialist organizations to participate often in those sub partnerships within, let's say, Startwell or the Area Partnership Board, which deals with substance misuse, uh, substance uh, uh, misuse and so on. Um, and we have then um, certain mechanisms because occasionally people will say, oh, we'd like, so we'd like sector representation or sector membership on this particular board or on this particular committee. And then we go out and we put in place a process for identifying uh, who would be best placed to do that. We do need sometimes to manage conflicts of interest, particularly if, um, uh, if money is involved or, or uh, um, the, the kind of provider commissioner relationship, that's always a bit of a tricky one uh, that, that we sometimes need to manage. And the last point I would make is that who sits around the table is never in Pavo's sole control. We, we, don't, we don't yield or wield so much influence that we can demand or uh, or, 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 or that we can require uh, certain things to happen. But I'm really pleased to say that the partnership culture in Powys is very, very strong. We do have a strong partnership with, uh, with the local authority, with health, with other organisations. And I'd like to think uh, that um, within that partnership, that we are a respected voice and, um, and, and an important partner on behalf of the wider third sector. That's a lot uh, of, of information, a lot of gone through, and, and uh, I'm, I'm really grateful for your patience uh, and forbearance. Uh, um, I, I'm just going to pause there, and before we break up into groups, actually, um, David Darby, uh, uh, our IT colleague, is with us. Claire, can you, can you um, let David know which PAVO colleagues are acting as facilitators in each of the four groups so that he can make sure that they are in at least, you know, so that those people are in, are in the groups. Thank you. Let me pause there and invite, um, as I say, the discussions are going to happen in the groups, but I, I just thought it would be worth um, uh, asking now, is there anything that uh, I've said that has made things as clear as mud. Um, is there anything that, uh, uh, that that hasn't been clear or anything that you'd like to um, comment on or ask for more information about at this stage before we go into groups? 
At the bottom of your screen, you'll see at the middle of your screen, a little hand symbol. If you click on that, it alerts me to the fact that you, you want to contribute and then you, you can switch your microphone on and please contribute. Anything anyone would like to say? Rachel, please. Hi, yes, just very quickly. Um, if we wanted to become um, members of any um, a particular uh, partnership, uh, would we just uh, approach you? What's, what's the procedure? Do we have to do anything beforehand or do we just contact you directly? Well, as I said earlier, it, it, de it depends what the, um, what the rules or requirements are in terms of what, what determines the membership of that particular partnership. So, as I say, sometimes we're, we don't have the flexibility to decide who is a member of the partnership. But, um, uh, but certainly um, what we can do, Rachel, is, and we, we've, been, we've begun to think about this, uh, within our organisation, whether you would find it difficult, uh, not, whether you would find it useful to have um, at least some information about who the go-to people are. So, for example, if somebody was interested in, um, in the emotional, emotional and well-being subgroup of the Startwell partnership, which is basically about children and young people's mental health. If an organisation had a particular interest in that, then the person to speak with would be, uh, would be Lucy. And actually, Lucy then would be able to support uh, the engagement and the involvement in that particular group. So I don't know whether something like that would be helpful, um, but as I say, um, it's not as simple as saying, I want to sit around that table, um, please, uh, uh, please, please get me there because that's not always in our game. Yeah, no, I appreciate that, 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 that it's not, uh, that, you know, that there's, there's a process to follow, but really I just wanted this, the start of a 10 really, how we would start. So if we can, would you be publishing those names of people to, um, contact for the particular area that you're interested in because that would be the, the that would be where we'd start really I, I i i think so and and i'm just floating that as an idea because um uh, one of the things that that might come out of the, the group discussions is is something like so we can very easily publish on our website for example um who the go-to person is for the various partnerships and as i say then you would have um, yeah. a, a contact person uh, for that for that particular partnership and yeah. uh, so that that may be something that we can we can do that we don't currently do that that's helpful yeah that would be helpful thank you any other comments at this stage i'd like us to go into four groups now and discuss some of the things that i've been trying to explain and really take the discussion wherever you think it is most helpful so i don't want these questions to be a straitjacket but certainly from my point of view um uh the kind of things that 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 i think might be of interest is how do we improve um our ways of informing the third sector about partnerships and how do we improve involving the sector in partnerships and helping the sector to influence partnerships and the kind of questions that i've listed there are what information would you find valuable how how would you want to access that information i should say that it might be worth people writing these down or, or recording them somewhere because when we go into groups we'll lose this but, you know, I've said that we, we have our mechanisms, we have our e-bulletins, we have our websites, we have uh, the, the, the social media. Is that the best way or does something else work better for you? Um, are the ways in which we can improve our networks and forums? Um, uh, if you are a member of any of the networks, you know, do, do, do they do what we want them to do, what you want them to do? 
and how might we make them more meaningful for you? Because people, I'm, I'm very aware that people's capacity is stretched and taking part in networks and forums is sometimes a big ask when you have so many other demands on your time and capacity. And then finally, how can we improve um, the ways in which we secure the third sector's influential voice and participation? So as I say, that's, a, 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 if you like, a suggested framework for the conversation, but not a straitjacket. Um, do use the Jamboards so that we can capture your thoughts. Um, David, um, David's going to split us up into four uh, groups now. We're going to have half an hour for these discussions, but what I'll do is that I'll dip in to each of the groups whilst, they, uh, whilst they're going on. If you find that conversation has dried up after 20 minutes, then we'll, we'll go with that flow. Um, but if you have enough to talk about for half an hour, then uh, that will be fine. Welcome back, everyone. Chris and all, Rigid. Um, uh, and uh, um, I hope that uh, the group discussions uh, uh, proved useful, interesting, helpful, and so on. Um, I did, uh, as, as you know, I did pop in uh, to each of them and conversations seemed to be flowing quite smoothly. Uh, I've also kept uh, a little eye on the jam board and that seems to be very well populated. So I'm not going to, um, uh, I'm, I'm not going to spend a lot of time now because I want to respect people's time. We are due to finish at half past three and we will finish at half past three. Um, but if I could go to the four facilitators of the groups and perhaps you just just literally in a, in a couple of minutes give us a flavor of uh, of your discussion and uh, uh, perhaps uh, um, uh, the, a, a a main point or a main couple of points that uh, that, that that came out of your discussion uh, so uh, um, shall I go to Claire first that's always the easy job to go first, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Carl. Um, I will. I will help my colleagues out and just pick up uh, on a couple of things, really. So, um, I think the main thing for me was that there is a huge amount of information, and it can be quite overwhelming, um, particularly where organisations might say, for example, represent the whole of Paris, but be based in one locality, and trying to understand what's going on across the whole of the county. Um, is quite challenging and where they can best use their time uh, to influence decision making and that information sharing. Um, two really great ideas which come out of our group, I think, is one is around the use of digital signage boards. And there's an example of a town council that's using them in their town and whether we could share information out to communities through, through that route. And there may be a need for funding for smaller town and community councils to get that type of board up and running. Um, and the other thing we were talking around, how do we then as PAVO share information back out to the sector, um, particularly from partnerships? Um, nobody really wants to sit, she says, nobody really wants to sit and read through reams and reams of minutes of um, uh, partnership meetings. They need something quite short, snappy, to the point and quite personable. And we got onto the idea, uh, which was well received, around creating blogs. So those short, snappy video blogs that can be shared on social media, um, on our website, and that kind of thing. I really like that idea, although I don't like looking at myself in the screen all day. So I might have to brace myself for that one. <laughs> so I'm going to leave it there for now and let my colleagues feedback. Thank you. And thank you to my group. Thank you, Claire. Um, let's go to Phil. Hey, we had um, a lot of kind of similar sort of themes coming up in discussions um, and also um, looking at coming away from traditional methods with a lot of people being able to access uh, Teams meetings or even sort of digitally um, and sort of seeing how we can get messages across without um, th those messages being diluted and sort of making the most of opportunities that we have online and having those kind of voices being able to be heard. Um, we also sort of had, um, there's a lot of information being put forward to us um, and accessing it again. Um, and there was something mentioned about uh, Paris being hard and tough nut to crack. 
Um, and then um, that person also said that that statement wasn't necessarily true because there was so much information being able to be presented to her. It was how she sort of um, processed that all, all of that information. So there was everything wanted to be going in the right direction. It was just how do we sort of channel it essentially without other people being lost or voices not being heard. Thank you, Phil. And uh, um, Sharon, please. Uh, yeah, I'll just pick up on the point of um, accessing information. My group felt that Parvo had this covered. Um, the bulletins they received, they thought was really informative and they're really well, well received. Um, they particularly like the fact that there are lots of grant opportunities for those organisations to be able to pick up. Um, what they would like, as you spoke about, Carl, was a directory of who's who within Parvo and who to go to regarding those um, relevant networks um, or forums and partnerships um, and also the priorities for those net, those um, forums as well. Uh, so then they can decide if it's relevant to them to attend or not for their organisation. But yeah, there was good discussions in our group. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I think finally, uh, um, Owen, I think, uh, was it you? <laughs> no, it was me. I mean, oh, sorry. Oh, no, of course, shot. Jen. Yes, thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was me. Yeah, we, um, we were group four and um, yeah we talked very much along the same lines it's it's good to know that um we've all said similar things about you know what matters most to people is um the information that we want that local and specific and targeted is important because what you know is important to somebody in Mahunkleth isn't necessarily going to be the same as someone in Ostrogun life so you know it's hard to toil through a lot of information that maybe isn't relevant to you just to get to that one piece of information that is relevant um so maybe something like claire said with the vlogs if you had like an overview of a news bulletin in tonight's news you've got bam bum bum and then you've got the longer bits underneath um there's something to maybe to look at um and I think the thing that was interesting as well was about, you know, there is so much strength in powers and one of the most useful things about the networks is coming together and looking at how we solve and overcome challenges together, how other people have done that. It's that sharing of information through each other rather than just disseminating from the top down um, is, is, um, is useful as well. Um, so, yeah, that's that's the main things. Thank you very much. Um, uh, I've I've just launched a, a poll. I think it's probably appeared as a link in your in in your chat pane. Um, uh, participants of these sessions will uh, be asked to uh, just just give us a bit of evaluation feedback afterwards. Um, but if uh, um, if 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 people had literally thirty seconds now just to open that um, uh, that poll and give, give us a sense of whether this session has been valuable or not. Again, uh, it, it's, a, uh, it, it's just a, a matter of knowing, uh, of helping us to make sure that what we do uh, is of value uh, and that uh, we, we carry on that, um, that, that road of constantly uh, making things meaningful for, for you as a sector. Claire, you wanted to come in? Yeah, thanks, Carl. Um, just to be clear, the uh, poll actually doesn't come up in the chat pane. So if you look down the bottom of your screen, you'll see um, the little symbol, which has got a triangle, a square and a circle. If you click on there, then you'll be able to find the um, the poll. Thank you, Claire. That shows that I'm often running these things and not uh, uh, participating. So, yeah, and different platforms have different approaches, don't they? So. Absolutely. So, uh, no, thank you for that. But uh, um, yeah, so if you uh, if you just fill in that that poll, then that 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 would be really helpful. Um, before we uh, go our separate ways, is there anything that anyone else would like to say or or um, uh, give voice to uh, before our session comes to an end? Can I just say one thing, Carl? One of the comments in our breakout group, which perhaps I should have mentioned, was uh, we are very fortunate in Wales that policy framework recognises the third sector and we have a voice. Yeah, th thanks, Sharon. I think, yeah, I think that, that and I think government being closer to people in Wales uh, is, is, is almost palpable, really. Uh, I know that, again, nothing's ever perfect, but uh, um, uh, you know, when I, when I speak to some colleagues in England who, you know, they would never ever get anywhere near a government minister, for example, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, let, let, or, or even a senior official. 
and uh, you know, I suppose that's the beauty of being a smaller country. But uh, um, but th thank you, Sharon. Okay, well, if there is nothing else, then it simply remains for me to thank each and every one of you. Um, and uh, just before we go, um, he joined us late, but you can see Joe Wellard uh, on the uh, on the call. And uh, for those who don't know Joe, Joe is the um, the coordinator of the regional partnership board that I, I referred to in my presentation and, and spoke a little bit about. And so it's Joe and his team that actually support and uh, and develop that partnership. And so uh, again, in terms of partnerships, Joe is a very key and uh, I think a very important person. So uh, um, and, and I'm really pleased that he's been able to, uh, to to be with us for some of this afternoon. Thank you, Joe. Um, thank you all. Thank you all. Thank thanks to those who have participated but have had to have but but have left early because of other commitments and so on. Um, uh, your time is much much appreciated. We will certainly take on board everything you've said, and we will implement as much as is humanly possible. Uh, but for today, uh, thank you. Diolch o galon am fod gyda ni ac uh, gobeithio byddwch chi'n mwynhau gweddu lle diwrnod. Uh, um, uh, and all, all the very best for the rest of the day. Thank you. Bye.